Hi, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living the Wholesome Life. And we are on week 49, day five, of our positive, peaceful affirmations that we are doing every day, Monday through Friday. We are following Dr. Susan Lawton's book, Positive, Peaceful Growth Calendar, that you can buy at Aroma Tools or Oil Life. I love this book. If you love positive affirmations and you love music therapy, if you love essential oils and aromatherapy, I think you're really going to appreciate the book too. It is pro, it is simple in its format, but very profound in the, in the changes it can help us make in our lives. The affirmation for the entire week is, I wish for what is in my highest and best good, and what I wish for often happens. And the affirmation for today, we've already talked about like a lot about making sure that we're wishing for good things and, and seeing the beauty of what life brings our way. So we've already kind of talked about that um, and celebrating our successes, talked about that. And so we're gonna go on straight on to the affirmation for today which is, I want only good for my friends and family and see good that's happening. So I'm gonna say the affirmation for today again. I want only good for my friends and family and see it happening. So see, I see the good happening. Now to me, this is a very easy affirmation. Of course we want only good for our friends and of course we want only good for our family. Now, having that said, I know that many times I have been like, I love that they caught that good. Can I get some of that good too? You know, so I want them to have like the job promotions, the the abundance and the the whatever, whatever else they're blessed with, right? I want them to have all of that. Sometimes though, that, that, um, that jealousy can rise up, unfortunately, in many of us, and it can be like, oh, I want that too. And so, I wanted to address a little bit of that jealousy with one of my favorite songs that reminds me that there's there's enough that the earth is that when God made the earth he made it unplentiful and there's nothing to spare and there's a scripture that says that God made the earth plentiful like we believe he was an all-knowing God and all loving God so of course he put everything down on this earth that we need and um, sometimes people get into scarcity thinking oh if they're loved I must not be loved, right? Like, for example, if my children love my spouse, do they love me less? No, no. I think that's just one of our, the lies that that um, we get told, that people tell us um, that, oh, if someone loves someone else, they must not, they must love you less. No, there's, they can love my husband to the max and they can love me to the max too. Right, and someone can be popular, and you can be popular, and someone else can be beautiful, and you can be beautiful. So just because someone else has something doesn't mean that there's not plenty in this world of that for you too. I really believe there is. Um, it's definitely a thinking of a scarcity mindset or an abundance mindset. And we want to move to from scarcity and we want to move to um, abundance. And Caleb, I forgot my essential oil. Will you please get me Tulsi that should be right there on the desk. So um, when you see that happening, right? If you see that happening, when you see that happening, can you, can we all just please say, they're, they're good, doesn't, what, what they have doesn't diminish me any. And, and can we be involved in their good? For example, let's see, um, 
and life is too short. We can't have every gift and we can't do every profession. We can't have all the things that we admire. We can't. We can't be the stay at home mom and the teacher, the kindergarten teacher. We can't be the, um, the lawyer and the football player. We can't be, I mean, not professionally, right? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe someone does that. But what I'm saying is life is too short. We can't do everything that we admire. <clears throat> so can we, can we participate in those activities by being the cheerleader? Can we participate by, by um, being supportive in our attitudes and being super excited for them when good things happen? Can we see their successes as our success? Whether it's a family member success, Yahoo, look at how awesome our family is. Whether it's a neighborhood's neighbor success, woohoo, look how awesome our neighborhood is. Whether it's someone's success that we don't even know, maybe it's a movie star's success, woohoo, look how awesome our country is. And if it's someone's success clear around the world, and it's probably uh, anyway, maybe it's the um, Queen of England. Who knows, right? Woohoo! Look how awesome our world is. Can we can we bring that success, that gift, that strength, and participate in it? Participate in it by appreciating it. So, here's an example of that. I have a daughter. Well, I have. I have two daughters, and they are both amazing at dancing. When did most, and when they went to college, they went to two different colleges. One went, went to a college that was pretty near home, and one went to a college that was pretty, um, you know, a many hours drive away from home. Well, when they did their dances, it was much easier for a lot of a lot of extended family to come to the one that was close by. Um, and watch the dancing. It was so much easier for that. So I'm going to use um, that daughter's experience. So you have one daughter, right? We're going to call her, well, I'm not going to give her a name. We're just going to call her Marianne. So let's say that Marianne is super good at dancing, okay? And that um, her grandma was never good at dancing her grandma can still come and participate in that experience by just watching and cheering and clapping and oh my and and ooing and eyeing over it you know and wow you were such a great dancer or whatever i can do the same thing for sports i was never great at sports but when i see people enjoying sports hey i love how much you enjoy sports or whatever um so all i'm saying is sometimes if we seem to be getting out of sorts because someone is getting something that we can't, can we participate in their good fortune? <clears throat> can we participate in their good for fortune by being happy for them, by cheering them, by really reveling in their success? And I do think that sometimes we need to pray for heaven. Pray not for, pray for heaven, but pray for heaven's help to give us strengths that maybe we don't maybe don't come naturally to us. Um, so if we feeling out of sorts and we're we're trying to be happy and revel with them in you know supporting them, and we're still feeling out of sorts because that isn't happening to us, can we pray for heaven's help? I am a firm believer that when we pray for heaven's help, heaven's help comes. And does God want us to be happy for other people? For the good things that happen to other people? Yes, he does. And does God want us to pray for good things to happen to other people? Yes, he does. He does. So um, that's one thing that I wanted to say about today's affirmation. Now I'm going to repeat this affirmation, then I'm going to tell you the second thing I wanted to say. I want only good things to happen. I want, I want only good for my friends and family and see it happening. Okay, so I want to talk about one other thing when it comes to comparison, right? Because that's what we're doing when we feel when we feel like we're worse. 
off when someone some, when something else has happened really cool to someone else we're comparing right we're comparing our lives to other people and we do that it's it's just naturally human to to do that um and so this is what I wanted to say and I was actually listening to a talk on this this morning on live on purpose tv and they were seeing that it's hard to stop the comparison and it's hard to stop feeling better than someone if we feel like oh i'm that we're we're that we're blessed with something more than we're than they are and it's hard to feel it's hard to not feel worse than we're blessed when we're blessed with something less or we've achieved something less than someone else has like let's say that we like gymnastics but someone else is the is the US gold medal champion Olympics right in the Olympics so it's hard sometimes not to feel less good and so sometimes people have a tendency to say I'm better than them or I'm worse than them because of whatever <sighs> which isn't helpful it doesn't really matter how much money we make if if I make fifty dollars a year and you make fifty million dollars a year that doesn't make you a better person than me and if it was reversed that wouldn't make me a better person than you right it might make me better at making money I'm not better than you or let's let's reverse it you're not better than me because you make a lot of money but you're better at making money. You're better in making money. Okay, um, another example might be, maybe I'm not good at math, okay? Um, or, okay, let's say, let's say, let's do, let's do something that's actually a little bit true. I'm really, really good at, at um, grammar, right? I, I'm great at grammar. Um, and so, but I'm not a better person than someone who struggles with good grammar. I'm better in grammar, but I'm not a better person. And my dad is way better at spelling than I am. And, and my son, Caleb, is super good at spelling too, um, which I feel really good at since I was his spelling teacher. But anyway, I think some people are just blessed with knowing how to spell better. And, um, Anyway, but my dad's not a better person than I am because he spells better. He's better at spelling, he's better in spelling, but he's not a better person. And I think that's what we can do when we start to have that comparison stuff going on too. We don't have to feel less than, we don't have to feel better than, we can feel blessed if we're better at something or we're better in something and we can still remember we're incredibly blessed in a whole lot of other things if we're worse in something or we're worse at something. I hope that makes sense because to me it was like, oh, we're not better, we're not worse. That just rings so true to me. Whatever it is that we're blessed at, we're not better, we're not worse. God loves us all the same. We have all the same equal human value some think people just might be better at some things and some people are better in some things and some people are worse at some things and some people are worse in some things and that is completely okay and i think that remembering that can help us when people get blessings it can help us rejoice in the beautiful blessings that we that people get okay so that's the affirmation for today the song that I'm pairing with that is actually one of my favorite songs. I heard it for the first time when um, back in like the early 1990s when I knew I, I had just like one, um, just what I think I just had one baby at, at the time anyway. Um, but however many babies I had at the time, it was still a beautiful song. And basically the song is In This Very Room. It basically says, in this very room, there's quite enough love for one like me and there's quite enough love for all of us and so it doesn't matter what, what what we substitute that 
in this very room, in this very world, there's quite enough wealth for me and there's quite enough wealth for you. There's quite enough love for me. There's but right now you know I've been canning gracious we only had like a couple of fruit trees right and then we found some and like we we crowned as much as we could of that like the Asian pear trees that we had and then we found some plum trees and some apple trees and then like our neighbors and our friends started you know knowing that we were super into canning and we would love their extra harvest and oh my gracious there's absolutely no way we can count it we can can it all there's no way. The world is abundant as we as we pray for what we need, as we reach out for what we need, as we're authentic for what we need with what we need, and as we're happy for what other people receive, I feel we will be blessed. Okay. So, um, again, in this very room is my song for this for today's affirmation. I will put that for everyone in the comments. The song for the entire week is Carmen by from the Opa, Opera Bizet. I keep men meaning to listen to that. I've only listened to like a little bit of it, but someday I hope to. And it's good to have those things on your someday list, the things that you want to do eventually. The the diffuser blend that we've been diffusing this whole entire week is two drops of frankincense, the king of oils, the oil of truth, a very protective oil. Two drops of bergamot, the oil of self-acceptance. I love that we're doing this blend whilst we're talking about being happy for others because we almost really need to be happy for what we have and to be grateful for what we have so that we can be happy for others. So, you know, if we're having a problem being happy for others, let's just count, start with counting our own blessings first. Anyway, so two drops of bergamot, um, the oil of self-acceptance, the oil of radiant sunshine. And then the third oil in this blend is the is clove, which is the oil of setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. Now we've talked about each of the physical and emotional properties of those three oils on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Check them out on our Facebook page or check them out on our YouTube channel. Um, the Facebook page is living the, oh, hold on. The Facebook page is Essential Oils Health Matters and the YouTube channel is Living the Wholesome Life Old. It's a long story why we have an old and a new one and I don't even remember half of it, but go to the old one and you will find those shout outs there. The oil that I want to talk to you about today is Tulsi oil and it's also called holy basil. I have it with me on the desk just smelling it and um, learning about it and smelling it while I was learning about it and can't find it now so I can't show you the pretty pretty bottle but you can order it from doTERRA. Its nickname is the oil of significance. The oil of rising up. I love that because as we're talking about being happy for others, we have to feel significant in ourselves to be happy for others and we have to feel that they're significant too and good things should happen to them too. And so I think Tulsi oil can help with both of these. Let me give you a little background here. So Tulsi is native to, or holy basil, same thing, is native to Southeast Asia. It's often revered and planted by the Hindu because they feel it invites the presence of the divine. It is called Tulsi, which is a Hindu word, which means the incomparable one. Hmm, I kind of like that concept. No one can compare to you. No one can compare to me and no one can compare to you and we can just stop 
the comparison that we so often get trapped into doing. Okay, the essential oil comes from the leaves of the herb. You can also use different parts of the plant um, that's sometimes used in the making of Tulsi oil, essential oil. Some people think it smells like a cross of basil and clove, and it's definitely a member of the basil family. So physically, here are some of the benefits. It boosts circulation. It's great to use in massage blends. You know, if, if you have an injury and you're trying to um, boost some circulation right to that, to that part of your body, um, go ahead, put some Tulsi or Holy Basil, same thing, um, into some carrier oil and then just rub that on. See um, how that works for you. It can help with balanced blood sugar levels. For that, you're gonna want to diffuse it. It can help with balanced blood pressure levels. I think the reason it does this is because it's such a calming oil. Sometimes people's blood sugar, I mean blood pressure, um, starts to rise when if they get frustrated or they get angry and they get agitated. Tulsi is a very calming oil. And so it can help balance out that blood pressure. Tulsi is a beautiful oil, like many herb oils are, to help clarify our complexion. So you can put a strop into your cleanser, put that on your face, you know, and um, wash it off. You can also, um, it's also good for, um, you can put, you know, just a drop straight I, I wish I had the oil for you, but I could take the bottle and just get like a fraction of a drop and then just put that, touch that to the different points on my skin that might need a little bit of help. And um, it's also good for clarifying other skin issues as well, right? Essential oils are not one trick ponies. Tulsi oil has, um, is useful for good, for maintaining good cellular health. Um, in Ayurvedic medicine, which is a medicinal system in India, it is used to help relieve fevers. And um, Tulsi oil or holy basil oil, they have found components in the Tulsi leaves, including caffeine, eugenol, and cineol, all of which help provide relief from congestion and um, are great for other respiratory disor disorders, which is why Tulsi is commonly used in Ayurvedic medicine for respiratory issues. So if you're working, if you're congested, go ahead, put some Tulsi in your diffuser and see how that helps you open up. If I was using it for congestion, I might wanna um, mix it with some other oils. Maybe I'm mixing it with doTERRA's Breathe. Maybe I'm mixing it with some eucalyptus oil or some lime oil. All three of those oils are amazing for helping our, um, helping our breathing become a little bit easier and helping to relieve some of that congestion. Basil can help sharpen the senses and can help us when we're trying to concentrate. So if you have something to get done, basil is wonderful for, to diffuse for that. Basil may help relieve headaches and migraines and is often recommended for such things in Ayurvedic medicine. Basil, I mean, Tulsi, holy basil, can be wonderful for when our eyes are pink and our eyes feel like they're congested. Um, for that, I would put a couple drops of um, Tulsi, the holy basil, and a couple drops of turmeric, um, put them in a carrier oil like coconut oil, and then look up where the reflexology points are for your toes, um, for your eyes, um, which to me is if I remember, they're right below some of your toes, um, and then put that, that oil blend there. Okay, so emotionally, what does Tulsi do? Tulsi, holy basil, what does it do? It's a very, very calming oil. It helps us calm down after a hard day at work it, or at home. <laughs> home can be just as hard. Working at home can be just as hard as working outside the home. So if you've had a, just a hard, stressful day working at school, 
can be hard and stressful too. So if you've had a hard, stressful day, diffusing Tulsi can be beautiful. Um, it can help us to calm down and better adjust to what's going on in our lives, better adjust to what's going on around us. For that, you can rub it, put a couple drops into some carrier oil, coconut oil, olive oil, whatever you like, and then just rub that on the bottoms of your feet. Um, or you can put it on your reflexology points on your feet for your adrenals. Tulsi is beautiful to use when you're feeling high levels of stress. So you can just take one drop of Tulsi oil, put it on your hand, rub it around, smell it. I would then probably put it on my heart area. And um, beautiful. You if so if you're just having like intermittent stress, you can do that no, just whenever. But if you're having if you're going through periods of a high stress where it's like months or weeks, maybe I don't know, maybe maybe you've just had a death in the family, maybe you've just had a divorce, maybe you've just started school in and you're feeling completely overwhelmed. So anytime you're you're kind of at that that complete overwhelm stage, this is what I would recommend doing. I would recommend putting Tulsi in your hand and smelling it four times a day, but don't just smell it for like 10 seconds, no. What I want you to do is I want you to set your little timer on your phone and I want you to go to um, say some positive things to yourself while you're smelling it. For example, you can say, you can, as you're smelling it, you can think to yourself, I've got this and things are gonna get better, right? And remember, this is in, in periods of high stress. I've got this and things are gonna get better. I've got this and things are gonna get better. I can handle this and things are gonna get better. I'm up for this and things are gonna get better. I was made for this and things are gonna get better. You know, do your own positive affirmation. The other thing that you can do too as well, you're doing that, and I want you to do that for two minutes, right, on your buzzer. And don't you have, make sure your buzzer is not gonna be like that super loud ringing one. It's just gonna be a soft, gentle, okay, your time is up. Anyway, um, another thing that you can do is when you're smelling that for two, for, that for two minutes, four times a day, what you can do is you can just think of a time when life was easy, when life was super good. Um, and think of a time in your childhood or whenever it was, or think of it one of your favorite places to vacation, just your happy spot. Um, in the Song of the South, they, there's a song that goes, everyone um, has to have a laughing place. Um, when you're down, you should go to your laughing place. Anyway, but we all have those places that we just felt happy in. And so if you want to, instead of doing that, those affirmations, you can just think of that time, that place. Imagine yourself in that place. Imagine yourself back in that time. Just take a little mind vacation. Now I suggest in times of very, very high stress, maybe even prolonged high stress, I would suggest doing that two minute breathing exercises, visualization, um, ex exercise four times a day at eight o'clock at noon, at four o'clock, and at eight o'clock at night. Um, tweak it however you want, but I'm, that's just a suggestion for you for times of high stress. Tulsi is beautiful to use when you're feeling like something is lacking in your life. Um, just, just start diffusing that Tulsi. Start thinking, why? What do I? What do I feel like is lacking in my life? Okay, take a deep breath. You know, mourn. If you want to mourn for a little while, give yourself permission to feel sad. Maybe it's something you really, really want and you just don't have it now. Then um, you can go two different ways or maybe both. You can get, you can look at all your blessings that you do have. <sighs> Breathing those in, thinking about those, journaling about those, you know, brainstorming about those. Or you can think about, I really want this in my life. How can I facilitate that? What do I have to do to help bring that back into my life? 
Okay, in Tulsi, beautiful oil to be diffusing while you're while you're game planning or just sitting there being grateful. Tulsi is great to diffuse at night to help you get a better night's sleep. Okay, remember how it's so relaxing and it can help us just let go of the stresses for the day from the day. Okay, sometimes our stresses keep us up at night. And and when that happens, and we get less sleep or we get like that intermittent sleep because we keep waking up thinking about whatever it is that has us stressed out. Then we wake up the next morning and we're not as rested. And when we're not as rested, things bother, little things bother us more than they would be when we are not, when we are rested. So it goes from um, stressed to less good sleep to more stressed to less good sleep and it can just be a vicious cycle that keeps repeating. Well, Tulsi can help us calm down, release the stresses so we can have a better night's sleep so that when we rise up in the morning, we feel rested, we feel rejuvenated. So when those stresses do help happen to us, we feel like we can handle things better and they don't stress us out as much. We're not making those mountains out of those molehills. So it's beautiful to use again when you're sleeping. You can um, you can use it a couple ways. You can diffuse it. You can put a couple drops of Tulsi, um, that holy basil, into a quarter cup to a full cup of Epsom salts. Put that in your water. Just soak in that beautiful, beautiful, relaxing water. That warm water or cold water, if you like cold water. I like warm water. Um, that beautiful, relaxing, warm water. Um, and that beautiful smell that is so relaxing. Or another way you can do this is you can put Tulsi into like a 10 mil roller bottle. I would probably do like 20 drops of Tulsi um, into like a 10 mil roller bottle with fill it with fractionated coconut oil. And then you can put it on your feet. You can um, put it on your spine. It's super good. You can do this too. You can put it on your children's feet as you're connecting with them and helping them settle down, settle into sleep a little bit more. You can put it on your children's sleep. Just give them like a quick one minute foot massage. Or you can put it on your children's back, kind of down their spine area. Just giving them that beautiful, beautiful back rub. I know when I was little, I loved for, we all of our children loved it when our mom rubbed our backs. Okay. Hey, um, three more things to do when you're stressed out at night, right? Because Tulsi is such an oil for releasing and letting go of that stress. So three more things that you can do is one, just um, doing a roses and thorns every single day. So we do that in our family. We, we don't do it every single day. We miss it, but we try to, you know, do it most days. And um, we go around and saying, this is this was something that made me really, really happy, and this is something that was hard that I didn't like that challenged me. Um, and so we call them our roses and thorns. And what it does is it, it locks it into our mind. Every single day has some parts that we don't like that are challenging, and every single day has some parts that are good. Another thing that you can do at night to just re release the stresses of the day is put the day to bed mentally. Just say, you know what, day, thank you so much for all the wonderful things that happened. And for all the things that weren't wonderful, we are now, the day is now done and we're putting those to bed. Starting fresh in the morning, just, just getting that mental image. And then, you know, if you're stressed, we, we have a father up in heaven and we can pray to help him relieve our stresses and help him strengthen us so that we are up to carry whatever life brings our way. Okay, Tulsi is beautiful to use when you're frustrated with someone. One, it can help us to calm down and release some of that frustration, but more importantly, it can help us so that we move from Oh, I'm so frustrated with them. Why can't they do this? Why are they doing that that way? I need them to do this and they're not, right? We're being frustrated with them. And we're putting like all the power onto them. Well, let's take that and we're, and that can really lead us into victim mentality. So let's go ahead and let's take that power back and let's say, 
they're gonna live their own life and you know heaven help them right and and we need that we mean that please heaven help them right and we are living our own life too we're taking the power back if we're frustrated we're gonna do something positive about our frustration to move our lives to move ourselves into a better place taking the power back okay Tulsi is great to diffuse in times when we t tend to take on someone else's trauma. Someone's going through a hard time and um, we get pulled into it. Maybe we get pulled in problem, problem solving for them instead of supporting them into solving their own problems. Um, maybe we're just like, oh, you have a problem, let me do it. Instead of letting them work through their problems and grow through how they're working through them. So Tulsi, beautiful oil to diffuse to, to let people grow at their own rate um, with their own challenges. Tulsi is great when you're trying to get rid of what doesn't serve, serve you. So if you're decluttering, start diffusing some Tulsi. It might make it, it might, never know. Different essential oils work differently on me than they do on you and differently on you than they would on me. But it might make decluttering easier calming this down yeah this this isn't really working for me let someone else have it um decluttering our emotions decluttering our habits tulsi is great for all of that tulsi is great this is one of my favorite things this is why i think it's the oil of rising up um tulsi is great for when we tend to procrastinate what is so important and instead do what is urgent and we're not getting to what's really, really important. So I really just wanted, I'm gonna take one minute, hopefully two maybe, and talk to you about Stephen Covey's four quadrants. And this is what he says. You have four quadrants in your life. You have what's important, and you have what's urgent, and you have what's not important, and what's not urgent. And then you have like how they cross. So if something is important and it's urgent, do it. You're probably doing it anyway, but if something is important and it's urgent, do it. If something's important, but it's, okay, if something's urgent and it's not important, delegate it to someone else. If something needs to be done right now, but it's not important, delegate it. Like those are things that you can give to someone else, hopefully. If something is not urgent, and it's not important, then can we just do less of that? Can we let not like let the things that are not urgent and not important clutter up our our um, days and let let's not let the non important and the not urgent steal our time. And lastly, this is kind of the most important one. If it's not urgent but it is important it's almost never urgent to hug your children and to tell them that you love them. It's n almost never urgent to read a bedtime story to them. It's almost never urgent to go swimming with them or to spend time with them or to play a game with them, but it is important. All those beautiful things that make our children and our family members feel loved are important. It's almost never urgent to exercise, but that's important too to our health. Um, anyway, so if it's urgent, I mean, if it's, if it's not urgent, but it's not important, it can be easy to keep putting that on the back burner and keep putting that on the back burner and so it never gets done. So if it's not urgent, but it is important, Stephen Covey says, schedule that into your day and hold just as true to that commitment as you hold to anything else. Okay, and Tulsi, beautiful oil to help us relax and think I want to stay true to my highest priorities so um for blending Tulsi if you're trying to blend for relaxation you can definitely blend it with Roman chamomile blend it with lavender you can blend it with rose um beautiful beautiful oils to help us relax for if you're trying to um feel uplifted if you want to uplift and blend with Tulsi uplifting blend with Tulsi. You can blend it with seriously any citrus oil. We know citrus oils are all um, mood uplifters. 
And so you can blend it with lemon or lime or tangerine just to get um, that beautiful uplifting energy. Now, when I think when I think relaxing and I think uplifted, I think of how you how you feel when you've just walked in nature or when you've gone to a spa. You feel rejuvenated, you feel relaxed, and you feel ready to take on what comes next. And um, if you're trying to blend it so that you stay true to your mission in life, here are some tips to you. Blend it with frankincense. Can frankincense can help clear out the clutter, help us realize what's important and what's not. Frankincense, blending it with frankincense. You can blend it with lavender. Lavender will help you calm down and help you keep going toward your life's goals and your life's mission despite the obstacles and the setbacks. Despite the failures, lavender can, can calm us and realize no failure ever needs to be final. So blend it with lavender for that. You can blend it with litsia um, to help bring back a sense of humor while you're pursuing your goals. You can blend it with rosemary to remember your why. Why, why am I even doing this? Sometimes when life gets hard, we have to remember our why. Why am I even doing this? And so Tulsi and lavender together can, can be very supportive in that. You can blend it with patchouli if you want to stay more in the present to help you enjoy the journey along your way as you're pursuing your life's mission and to help us to go from being reactive to everything that life throws at us to being more proactive. So for that, you can blend the Tulsi, and the, which is the holy basil, and the patchouli together. Okay, so that's everything I have. Caleb, hold on. Caleb. Caleb. Hold on. He's my cameraman and I think he fell asleep. And well, he definitely fell asleep. Okay, so um, that's everything that I have on Tulsi Holy Basil. is T-U-L-S-I. Um, definitely you can buy it in doTERRA it, you can only get it from doTERRA if you can buy if you buy the convention kit which has a whole slew of other amazing products you're gonna love 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 the kit so just reminding you the diffuser blend for this week is two drops frankincense the oil the king of oils a protective oil the oil of truth two drops of bergamot the oil of self-acceptance and radiant sunshine, and two drops of clove, the oil that helps us to keep and set boundaries. The app, the song for the entire week is Carmen from Bizet. The, the song for today is In This Very Room, which reminds us there's enough for all of us. There's enough and to spare for all of us of whatever it is. The affirmation for today is, I want only good for my friends and my family, and I see that good happening. I would almost when that good happens. And the affirmation for the entire week is, I wish for what is in my highest and best good, and what I wish for happens often. This is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils, Health Matters, and Living the Wholesome Life, reminding us all that we have this incredible ability within us, with God, to make every day a great day. Bye-bye.